Well, besides from this, this movie will help you poop. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Halloween Ends, the ending of the trilogy that David Gordon Green and Danny McBride started all the way back in 2016. Well, you definitely knew they knew what they were doing for the first movie. The second film, as a lot of people, including myself, reviewed, uh, we, we put that movie through the floor. That is one big pile of shit. The level of stupidity on the townspeople, and then just the ending, completely doing a 180 into this sort of supernatural element without any kind of juxtaposition was very unwarranted, yet that movie had a lot of kills. So the third film in this series, we were kind of, admittedly myself and Mark, who you've seen from the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th reviews, we were very hesitant going into this movie. But let's just talk about the film itself because it actually is slightly a rom-com. So the film doesn't start with anything to do with Laurie Strode or Michael Myers. It actually starts with this kid, this teenager, who's come last minute to help babysit this rich couple's bratty ass kid. Have this late night movie session and his little shit starts to kind of show his true colors being more and more of an asshole. There's this sort of element of maybe Michael Myers is inside the house, but it's actually just the kid fucking with this other kid who inadvertently, unintentionally, full sends this kid over the bare, <laughs> the railing of a three-story staircase and what bams into the floor. We cut to the future and apparently this kid never faced any criminal charges, which, my lord, wow. But he's the pariah of the town, is hated by most people, but then Laurie Strode and Laurie Strode's granddaughter particularly show affection and compassion and actual human care towards him. However, this kid has been infected with the evil of the town that Michael Myers has stirred in it. Eventually just gets harassed by this incredibly aggressive high school marching band far too many times and he finally succumbs to the evil of Michael Myers, who's still alive but not really. And what we get after that is essentially this incredibly triple Decker, sloppy second version of Palpatine and Anakin Skywalker. What have I done? At first, I actually liked the direction they were going with this kid. I liked the idea of evil fully just pushing you over, giving you that one bad day. And at the same time, he's drawing Lori Strode's granddaughter into this, into this idea of let's get away from this town, let's burn it all down, let's just get away from it because there's nothing good here. And at first you think that her granddaughter is kind of going into this. It's kind of will give you a little bit of that natural born killers kind of vibe. Until about three quarters of the way through the film where the stupid level hits you. You are made of stupid. Now in the Halloween Kills film, the stupid level hit me when the girl, that lady got killed by the door. <laughs> thing I have ever seen. I remember pausing it right there and being like, nope, 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 that's it. That's that's a level too stupid for me. I continued, but I had to pause it several times afterwards. If I had been watching this at home, that there's a part where I would have done the exact same thing. Because it very, very clearly shows that Danny and Gordon, or Gordon Green, definitely just wrote these scripts while fucking super stoned. Not a great plan. And they just kept on thinking, you know, what if we did this, but actually it was this? My bro, that's that's a great idea. But wait, what if we did this, but actually did this? My dude, that, that, that's so good. But what if we did this? And I feel like that's just what happened going back and forth, back and forth. Despite the fact that these guys say they knew what they were doing from the beginning, that's not true. That's not true at all. This is as poorly put together <laughs> of a trilogy as the Star Wars sequel trilogy was in terms of planning. <laughs> they had this kid been introduced even in the last movie. That would have made sense. But instead he is a brand new character and while I actually do enjoy the vibes, the editing, and the pacing of the story for the first half, it's the second half that just takes a giant dookie turd all over itself. This should be called Halloween Poops because it poops literally all over itself. There are some scenes that are so poorly put together, so awkward. There's a part where the character, this kid, 
his mom, who's incredibly controlling and aggressive, basically like rings this kid through, then slaps him in the face, and he looks at his big fat dad in the corner of the room, looks at him, and just says, and his dad says, I hope you find love. I was expecting it to jump to grayscale, really awkward piano music, and say Le Fien, because it went to this absurd, strange French auteur level in certain areas, not on purpose by accident are not intentionally done for sure. Michael Myers gets sidelined in his own movie. He is in the film, but he's not entirely there. He, this kid is more so the main character of the film. And then I feel like there's kind of like, you know what, he hasn't been that entertaining. Let's just switch it over to Michael Myers for the last 10 minutes. I don't enjoy this film for a few reasons. I don't like that it didn't commit to what its idea was. I don't like that it, com that it couldn't commit to a single story. It clearly didn't have a plan beforehand. If anything, it goes on to the level of those Rob Zombie kind of difference sort of uh, Halloween experiences. It doesn't stay true to what was in the intention being the first movie and even the second one because that whole supernatural element that they set up at the end of the second film for fucking get about it it doesn't happen it has no existence they try to make him human again where he's like no no you can't do that you literally just established this motherfucker is supernatural you just established it. In the end, I'm gonna give Halloween Ends or Halloween Poops a two out of seven. It had me for the first bit and then it just threw it all away. I would rather watch Halloween Kills because at least that movie is entertaining and that movie has more kills than this one does. This one only has about 13, 14. And they're not that great. A lot of them are cutaways. Anyways, uh, give credits to Jamie Lee Curtis, who's great in this movie, despite her script being terrible with some of her interactions. Definitely give it to John Carpenter for slapping that soundtrack once again. The editing for the first half of the movie was really decent, I feel, but that's it, guys. This trilogy ends on a fart, a wet, stinky, dir dirty fart. And I'm sorry for those who were invested in this and were hoping for a good ending. I know Mark was and he was fucking pissed <laughs> when we left the movie theater. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time.